Hello everybody, Marina here for a new video. By the title, I guess you already know what we're going to talk about today. This is going to be a whole video. So without further ado, let's get to it. I'm going to read from the back so that you get an idea of what the book's about. If ever you're interested, you know exactly what to expect. This unique collection of speeches, writing, and rare interviews by the president of the African National Congress with a foreword by Nelson Mandela and compiled by Mrs. Adelaide Tambo gives a coherent and comprehensive view of ANC policy, both within South Africa and on worldwide scale, over three decades. For much of this time, Oliver Tambo had been the movement's leading spokesman. Arranged chronologically with short introduction to each chapter, the ANC development is traced from its origin as a protest movement in the stormy 1950s through its banning and subsequent reconstitution in exile. It ends with a series of significant recent speeches which look with optimism to the future and a vision of post-apartheid South Africa. Oliver Tambo speaks is essential reading, not only for policymakers and academics, but for all those who support the basic, the basic struggle for human right and wish to broaden their understanding of the current political situation in South Africa. Second book, Albert Lutuli, Let My People Go. Albert Lutuli's extraordinary story is also that of African National Congress, which he led for 15 years. Lutuli's lively first-hand account tell of the repression and resistance that were to shape the South African political landscape forever. The defiance campaign, the first mass challenge to apartheid, the drafting of the Freedom Charter, the treason trial, and the tragedies of Sharpville and Langa. Albert Lutuli was the first African to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. This book bears witness to Lutuli's unfailing humility, perseverance, and passionate commitment to the values of non-racialism and non-sexism. His vision, crucial to the shaping of the South African we live in today, continues to move and inspire. That is that. I don't know what I was expecting and who sent to me, but the next book is this one. It's the French version of, um, let me give you the title in English for those of you who are interested, The Quiet Violence of Dreams. The Quiet Violence of Dreams. And in French it is uh, La Sourde Violence des Rêves by Kesselo Dwicker, South African also. We lost him to mental illness and um, he, one of those who died too soon but anyways um i wanted to have this book in english but it was way too pricey for me to buy them so i placed the order for a french uh version of it i didn't expect it to be this big but luckily for me i've been going through it and i've seen that there are many dialogues and provided they are well written i i would not feel the weight of the pages you know because if you know me well, you already know. Chunkers and I are not friends. But hey, we're going to read this one. We don't have any kind of choice. I want to discover is the right thing. And I also bought um, by the same author, this one here, The Hidden Star by Kiseli Dwicker. I'm not going to read from the inside what it is what is written there i think i'm just gonna read what it in what is in the back because i feel like this keeps the mystery intact okay it says this is a book of question and answers uh, this is a book of questions and answers but you already know what you want to ask which is why you're reading in fact the truth is that you already know the answer to your question you just have to listen to yourself so let's keep it mysterious. I love it that way. Open it with you. It's been a long time. I so wanted to have this one. I don't know if I'm going to like it, love it, or whatever, but I wanted it. So here it is. Oh, the sides are a bit bruised. But anyways. Hey, Nomaswazi. I, I don't even have to read. I've been wanting this book for so long that I know the title by heart. Nomaswazi by Busisekile Kumalo. This is, I think, 
this got to be a second novel or a third one. I don't know exactly, but I wanted to read this one. I've been wanting to read this one. So now that I got it, you know what I have left to do all the way from South Africa. Now it is here in Paris. So I'm going to read it very, very soon. Let's keep going because I don't want this to be too, too, too long. Petit Manuel Antiraciste et Féministe de Jamila Ribeiro. Yeah. I also bought Chronique, Chronique sur le Féminisme Noir by Jamila Ribeiro. This is how I received it. So you can tell I haven't yet read it. And I received it maybe three months ago. And the editor sent me this one as a bonus. So this is a free copy I received from uh, Ana Kaona edition nos no, nozo Marce, marcelino frère okay so from her i have this one and that one to read from usman diara la route des clameurs uh i'm not gonna read from the back like necessarily it is written in french and you know i don't know if this one has been translated she also recommended this one to me uh, Abbas John Ramata, same thing. It is in French, and I was pissed when I received this book because she she knows she knows that I don't love chunkers, and this one here is five hundred and I don't know how many pages. I was like, but well, I'm gonna read it. I spent my money on it, so yeah, I'm gonna read it anyways. The next one is Njabul Ndembele, Le Lamont Le Lamonto de Winnie Mandela. I bought this book in French, though I have two copies in English already. And my sister is like, oh, give it to me, give it to me. But I don't know if I'm going to give it to her. She has to deserve it, right? Uh, yeah, Lula Monto de Winnie Mandela is the, the cry of Winnie Mandela. I showed it in one of my videos. I'm going to link it there. Lula Monto de Winnie Mandela. The Price for Their Pound of Flesh by Dinah Rame Berry. Here it is. I'm not going to say too much about this book. When I, if you've seen my nonfiction on booktube tag video, you remember me telling you that there are some, certain books that I don't read because I want to protect myself. This type of books. I know that I'm going to read it and I know I'm going to get many information in there, but I also know knowing who I am, that I'm going to be pissed for at least a day or maybe two after reading this book. But I need to know. I want to know. So, yeah. I can keep protecting myself and pretending. So I have to gather all this information and cope with the, the pain that comes with it and the rage that can, uh, you know, surface. Janice Otemi, La bouche qui mange ne parle pas. The he is from Gabon, and this is gonna be this is gonna be my first time reading him, my first experience. I don't know if I'm gonna buy anything else by him. It would depend on how I feel after reading this one. I also bought uh, Meurtre à Tombouctou by Moussa Konate and uh, L'Affaire des Coupeurs de Tête by the same author, Moussa Konate. This is Malio, Burning Grass by Cyprian Equency. Next addition to my um, African Writer series is this one, Ordered by the Oracle by Asari Konadu. Essential reading to me as, as well, uh, Facing Mount Kenya by Jomo Kenyatta. I wanted, I wanted it in the African Writer series collection as well, but they, I couldn't find it. So yeah, I went for this edition, for the vintage edition, which is not too bad, by the way. And voila. Jomo Kenyatta, let me read from the back. Jomo Kenyatta, the grandson of Kikuyu Medicine Man, was among the foremost leaders of African nationalism and one of the great men of the modern world. In the 1930s, he studied at the London School of Economics and took his degree in anthropology under Bonislav Molinovsky, one result of which is this now famous account of his own Kikuyu tribe. Facing Mount Kenya is a central document of the highest distinction in anthropological literature, an invaluable key to the, 
to the structure of African society and the nature of the African mind. Facing Mount Kenya is not only a study of the life and death, work and play, sex and the family in, uh, in one of the greatest tribes of contemporary Africa, but a work of considerable liter literary merit. The very sight and sound of Kikuyu tribal life presented here are at comprehensive and intimate and as precise as they are compassionate. So let me learn about the Kikuyu people from a Kikuyu man. Let me try that. Silence is my mother tongue by Suleiman Adona, Adonia. Uh, this one, I think I bought it four months ago. I'm just not reading it because I want to take my time and I don't want to read it in a hurry. Right now I have to read 27 books I told you already for Lesson Littéraire for Le Prix Les Afriques 2020. So I'm concentrating on that. But once I'll be done with all those books, I'm going to read this one. Silence is my mother tongue, Suleiman Adonia. And the typo. Oh, all oh, the typo. I never paid attention to the typo. It is written like tinny, tinny, winny, winny. C'est pas grave. Je vais le lire. Oh, last but not least, I'm going to blame this on Elnathan John. You know the writer? Elnathan John. Why? Because three months or four months ago, he had a thread on his Twitter account recommending the, the writing of this fellow citizen of his, saying that he is a good storyteller. I had seen another blogger, and I'm going to put the link down below to our blog it's marie marie okwenke or something like that she talked about um this writer three years ago or maybe much more years back i don't remember precisely she talked about his work and said how talented this writer was and how he didn't get his props so when ellington john said that it is worth the read i was like okay let me get whatever it is that i can get and start reading. So, I bought the one that I'm not going to read first. I'm sure this is not the one I'm going to read first because it's a collection of short stories. The Ghost of Sania Bacha by Chumano Kolo. Yeah, remember, he's, write down his name and remember him. The second one I have from, from the same author is this one, Diaries of a Dead African, Chumano Kolo. I don't really appreciate this cover. I prefer Ma Mary's cover. It was a painting of a man with a big head and everything. I loved that cover, but I couldn't find it on uh, on the internet. So I got this one because the most important is what is between the covers, right? In the middle. Let's say that. So yeah, Diaries of a Dead African. When I'll be done with the Prix Les Afriques 2020, donc, so, le, le Prix Les Afriques 2020, I will start reading my own books of choice and i think that this one is going to be among the first ones i'll be quick to grab because i can't wait it's been like four months so yeah i'm looking forward to reading anything by shuman Ukolo. actually i placed i placed my order for three of his books but the third one which uh was a pace setter collection uh was no longer available so they refunded me and that that one was the one i wanted to start with because it's a very very short one but anyways since i got this one this is the one i'm going to start with and after after this one i'm going to read the ghost of sania bacha voila shuman okolo shuman okolo recommended by elnet and john appreciated by mari okwere ok or Okwere, she has a blog. I'm going to put the link down below. So if these people, let me show you, put it that way. If these people can recommend this writer and tell me that his writing is good, I trust them and I am going to read them. Because if this book is not good, if these books are not good, I'm going to sue Elnath and John. I'm telling you, you can go and tell him if these books are not good, but I doubt that. It's going to be just as... Um, you gotta be just as a good reader as he is a writer. So I trust him when he says that. 
this one is worth these this writer is worth reading so voila these are the books that i am showing today i will come back i don't know when for another book haul because i didn't want to show you all the books i have accumulated for this during this pandemic so voila that's it for me today see you in my next video bye bye